Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Hero Nation Show, the place where business owners and entrepreneurs just like you come to learn tools and tactics to live more epic lives. Um, today, I'm with my buddy right here, Wayne Salmons. You guys know him. He's been on this podcast a lot. A bunch. A lot. It's, it's, it's a lot. He's a thing. It's something like Hero Nation and him kind of come together. They something make like a thing. that. Um, today, we're going to pick a, a, a really interesting subject, which is going to be ethics and leadership. It sounds like a Yay. sexy topic. Yeah. Seriously. So one of the interesting things and the reason why I wanted to kind of bring this up was that it seems that we have a little bit of an issue um, in the in the business world with um, with this topic. And where it kind of relates to is I was, I was reading this uh, really interesting article that was um, that was talking about uh, business and ethics and all that stuff. But one of the specific things that they were talking about was that that one of the number one things for employees was they felt like they're a lot of people in leadership, their owners of businesses, their management teams, anything like that, they felt like they were constantly being told about being ethical, about uh, having yeah. a super high standard, um, you know, well, living, like living, Enron, living right? this I perfect life. I was on the plaque, but if you went out in front of the building of Enron, they had this nice plaque yeah. with like all their values on it and like... Yeah. Obviously not. Yeah, and so the the feeling of like, hey, you're trying to get me to live up to this, to this, uh, this standard up here. And yet, you're not actually doing it right. yourself. And and so this interesting kind of conversation that Wayne and I started having back and forth uh, kind of sprouted. And I, I thought you guys would love to kind of be a part of it and listen to it um, as we kind of try to unpack the this even for ourselves. The conversation no one else will touch because they're smart. So here we go. Business and ethics, not, game not, on. This is not, it's not the easiest. This is a conversation, guys. We don't know. We're just we're going to be spitballing back yes, and forth we what go. we think. The premise that I was kind of thinking on was that the people... That maybe we have kind of started creating unethical people in business from the very beginning. Uh, and so you're I talking think about like the YouTube person that's like I'm a YouTube influencer and they're on video three. Right. Well, I think it. I think it comes from maybe this this moral or the stance that we we tell people, which, which I, I know we both love so much, which is like this whole like fake it till you make it kind of thing. Ah, uh, yes. And what I was kind of positing was this idea of like I'm wondering if having that statement or trying to live up to that statement in that in in some way basically starts you on a slippery slope where you start faking it you basically start lying to people at the very beginning saying that you're actually making it we were i'm already here you got and you guys need to follow me because i'm i'm already doing it and then you basically start on that path and then you end up in this really horrible space where, yeah, you finally arrive where you said you were in the first place, only to realize now people expect you to be two or three levels up. Yeah. And so you start faking that level. Like, right. you know, I don't, and, I, and, and to be like more specific, I don't care whether this is how much you make or um, how big your business is or um, what kind of car you drive? So for like, you, is, I mean, it, is it an ethical issue or is it more of a life quality mindset issue? I think it's both. Yeah. So because I think it, I think it posits over, right? Because if people, because okay. right, but, but let me push back on it for a second. I mean, how often Les Brown talks about this a lot? He goes a lot of times. You know, it's like walking at Target, and before you get to the door, right, those Target doors will open, right? You sent me that video a while back, right? <laughs> right, and, and he talks about how you know oftentimes God will there will be an opportunity that opens for you before you're ready. Right. Right. So, so I think that there's a time and place where you do, you know, there's an opportunity that's ex given to you and you got to step into that before you're 100 percent ready. But I think what you're talking about is, am I am I talking like, hey, I, I, I'm doing a thousand transactions. I'm doing this. I'm doing this. I'm doing this. And you're not. And I think that's where that's an ethical line. I would I would say just because you have the opportunity doesn't mean that you've taken advantage of the opportunity. Yes. So so here here's uh now now yeah. So here's what I realized years ago. I thought that I had to have arrived before I took on opportunity. Right? right? So especially when I started teaching bold, I thought, man, in order for me to be able to teach classes, I need to have arrived in order to be authentic to teach this class. And a big switch for me came when I realized First off, I'm never going to arrive. Like I'm never going to be like, especially like that kind of material. Like I'm never going to be a hundred percent, right? It's going to be a journey. It's, it's, that would be like, I would have to have mastered the Bible before I could teach the Bible, which is never going to freaking happen. But what I do need to be, if in order for me is, I, I don't think I can stand up there and pretend like I've arrived. I think I stand up there and go, you know what? I'm nailing this. I'm nailing this. I'm working a whole lot on this, right? Like here's my yeah. journey. Like I, I, I'm crushing this area. I'm struggling over here. And uh, I think just being authentic, but I think it comes down to people feel like they have to be 
perfect or they have to have arrived or they have to somebody that they said i've only sold 40 homes well and i was like who cares like the general public maybe to the general public 40 is a lot they don't know right but they're like man i can't be authentic until i do 600 it's like man 40 is a whole lot more than most people have ever sold well it, but i think it's i mean how much more relaxing would it be if we if like everyone okay i'm, I'm not because yeah. I mean, even even i think that we all do this at some level right okay so we're you know you have hero nation right. and and we're like you know we are a coaching company right and you know you know we, we and we do really good stuff right but like we're still working we're still working and yeah. we're I'm, we're not we're not tony robbins we're yeah. not yeah. We're, you know, well, we're, not, we're not, we're not, we're not, there's like, there's all, all these other companies yes. out there that do much bigger things. Yeah. And yet, you, you know, you're trying to like compete with the big dogs. Yeah. Well, and, and but, I think here's what's come down to, I was talking to a coaching client about this last week and she, and she said like, I feel like you need to have all this stuff done before I can bring somebody onto my team. And, and, and quite frankly, there was some things that she needed to do before she hired team members. Like, let's get real clear. There's mm -hmm. some things she needed to do, but she's done those things. And now she still has it. And she goes, but I know it can be better. I know I can improve it. And I, I, t I said to her, you know, I said, the funny thing is, do you realize that the people I first started coaching, you're getting a way better experience than they are. And by mm -hmm. the way, the people I coach five years from now, they're going to get a better experience than you are because I'm on the journey, right? Do I yeah. think I'm doing my best? Absolutely. Do I think I'm working every day to be a better coach? Absolutely. And guess what? It's going to be better five years from now than it is today. Right. So, so I think that's the authentic journey you got to be on is like being okay, doing the work, being okay with where you are. Um, and a lot of people, they fake till they make it because they, they haven't done the hard work. And I think those are the people that I have the big issue with. One, right. one the ones that are just straight up lying. I, I, I think they're just lying, right? And then the people that are resisting the hard work and they're trying to skip the steps. Well, and like right now we're talking about, you know, basically uh, B2C, so business right. to consumer. Right. Right. But I also think that there's something like, I don't know if there's a B2E, but I'm going to call it B2E, so um, uh, boss to employee. Right, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right, where, because like, that's where some of this, this kind of disgruntled stuff is kind of coming from, right? Yeah. Is that my boss says this, he says, I'm living this journey, he has all these inspirational quotes, but as soon as we get anywhere close to this person, or we spend any good time around this person, yeah. we realize, like, hey, like, it does it doesn't match up and why should i have to be so ethical if you will not be ethical yeah right there's this this conundrum and so i'm i'm kind of wondering like does this start on like the b2c side right it starts a business yeah. to consumer side and it works its way in because because yeah, guess what agree. you start out as a business your employees are originally a lot of times in the consumer market they see your business acumen yeah. they come in based on the image that you're presenting to the public and then they're inside your business and now they expect the same image that they got when they were outside and then they find out like hey this yeah, isn't, so, this so isn't I, the same I deal. think there, I think there's a lot of truth to that and yet yeah, and at the same time though I think it's a little bit like your family right, right. like your family knows you left the toilet seat up. Your family knows like you cry like a baby when you're sick, like whatever it is, right? Like I think there's a difference between are they working towards that stuff or is it straight up just here's our plaque on the wall and we're not these people at all, right? So I think right. it's a big part of it. Um, and I, I think the, the second piece of that is are your values clear? And a lot of times I sit down with teams and I go, what are your values, right? They have like their standards. Hey, do this much production, do this whatever is, but they, they're not clear on their values. And when I mean clear on their values, they're not able to, they're using all these catchphrases that they got off the internet, right? Yeah, like, really like cute. responsible and, you know, customer service first and like blah, blah, blah. But it's like, you go, cool, what does that mean? Like, can you give me four or five examples, real life examples of what um, resourceful means or what like great customer service looks like? Like, yeah. and they can't. So it's, it's a lot of times it's just these fancy things on the wall and they can't unpack those for you. So I go up to you and I go, dude, be more resourceful. And you're like, I don't know what that means or be coachable, right? We hear those things all the time. Most, the average person doesn't know what that means. And even if they know what it means, oftentimes those two people have different perspectives of it, in the, right? So I think right. it also is getting everybody on the same page, I think is a big a big piece of that. L let me give you one more thing on, on, on ethics. What have you set up the measuring stick? And what I mean by that is, have you actually articulated what causes people to stay in business with you and what would cause people to get out of business with you? Have you identified what your values and mm -hmm. what your ethics are? And have you clearly defined them so that so that a 12 year old could pick that up and understand what you mean? I, I think that's a big that's a big part of it. And then I think that so many people here, here goes back to the, the employees complaining. Are you having real conversations or are you just complaining for the sake of complaining? There's no perfect leader. And what I've realized is mm. every amazing leader I've got close with. Right. The closer and closer you get, you realize they all have stuff. Every yeah, leader absolutely. I've ever worked with, I don't care if it's 
John Maxwell or right, other people, like every person has their stuff. Oh, yeah. So if you're expecting a perfect leader, you, you better, right, you better cool your heels a little bit, right? You're not going to find a perfect mentor. You're not going to find a perfect business. You're not going to find a perfect partner, perfect leader, whatever it is. Everybody has their stuff. So I think you got to have that measuring stick, though, to kind of go, are we in the range and within growth or is this blatantly just outside? So I, and, I, and, I, and I, I hear what you're saying there. I, I think really the more the issue is leaders setting standards that they do not adhere to. Yeah. I think that is, okay. Yeah. We'll, it, we'll take a, real, a good real estate example. All right. Um, guy has like a, a team or maybe he's a mortgage lender, real estate team. Right. doesn't matter. You know, anything that deals with like ISA kind of stuff. And they're like, you know, between, you know, eight and 10, I expect, you know, uh, or eight and 12, I expect you to do like, you know, uh, calls and get inbound leads and, and do all this kind of stuff. And, you know, and do outbound calls and do all these cold calls and do all this stuff. And then they go back to their office and they don't get it done. Yeah. Or they're like, and, oh, well, my dog was sick or I have this or all my priorities are way above. I expect everyone else. To oh, yeah. Well, I was I was inside. troubleshooting yeah. all yeah, this yeah, stuff. Yeah. And, and so the it's like, are you are you a leader that leads from from the back? Or are you a leader that leads from the front? And I think that a lot of us have learned how to lead from the back, not necessarily from the front. Maybe we, or maybe mm-hmm. we were taught like, hey, because it goes down take what I'm saying in inside context because if you are a leader and you're running a business yes your responsibilities are different than your employees right. all this other kind of fun stuff take that with a take right. that with a grain of salt it's actually there however I would also kind of posit that I see a lot of leaders do the talk about how to run a really good business yeah. how to you know, whether to, you know, like I have or do these kind of funnels and then they kind of expect the people underneath them to basically almost kind of like fill the gap to make them to make them look good because they're not actually doing their job. Yes. Yes. And I think that's where employees get really upset. I don't think it's mm-hmm. I don't I don't think it's in the I don't I don't think it's in the the complete blatant line. I don't think it's anything yeah. like that. I But I do think it's at some level it's on. It's on that side, like, hey, if you're asking me to be ethical, if you're asking, which, all right, so ethical can be, mm-hmm. we, we make that all kinds of weird yeah. stuff in our head, but let's say you ask me to do the most important thing, but you won't do the most important thing, yeah. or you ask me not to lie to a customer, and then you turn around, and when the customer comes mm-hmm. to you, and they're, and they're super pissed off, and you're yeah. like, you can't lie to the customer, yeah. and the next thing you know, you're spinning fluff, Right, and yeah. you're you're completely 100% lying to the customer to get them off your back in front of your employee. The employee is like <sighs> fire, yes. storm, like yeah. steam coming out of your ears, because at that point, when the when you know yeah. I'm trying to hold you to an ethical standard of saying like you don't lie to our employees, that's a fireable offense, you know, or you don't lie to our customers, that's that'll get you fired or whatever. Yeah. And then, and the next thing you know, like you're like so. So let me so, ask you this. What are, I mean, I think one of the great questions to ask yourself is like, would you want to work for you? Right. It's like, what Mm. things are great about working for you? What things would you like? Would you want to go to work with you? I think it's a great question to ask. Um, And yet I think especially if people are watching this, where are, if you can, if you can think about it, what are two or three ways people are out of integrity, maybe without even knowing it? Where are Mm. they out of integrity or being unethical and not knowing it? So I think one thing is, Right. Are you are you telling your employees to do something and then not doing the similar thing? Right. Are you telling right. them to be, you know, aggressive and upfront and we never, you know, don't charge this fee or whatever it is and then and then they're changing, right? So maybe that's one. Where's some others you can think of where they may unintentionally be unethical with with, with their staff? With their staff, I <laughs> you know, if, if you're if you're if you're going to hold someone to the standard of being there on time, 100% of the time, and you're not there on time, I would say that's go. an ethical problem. I, I would say I would agree. So, you know, you can't yell at your employee for being 10 minutes late if you are 10 to 15 minutes late. Yeah. The only way that you can hold anyone to a standard is if you've, are, you're actually holding yourself mm-hmm. to a higher standard than that. Yeah. 
See, I, I, think, I think another one would probably be, let, let's say you, you say your value is for people to take care of themselves and have time off and everything else. Mm-hmm. And then you're working them 80 hours. You're, the expectation is you're working them 80 hours a week. And it's not just a one time. I mean, we all have those weeks where you got to hunker down. But when it's a consistent, I expect yeah. you to sacrifice your family to be here over and over and over. You're probably out of, out of, out of, out of line. Yeah. Yeah, there's something there that's that that, that either you're not in, you're not choosing to invest right. in your employees and or further as ed- further education or yeah. further education for yourself so that you can actually um, not require your employees mm-hmm. to do yep. 80 90 hours a week. Yep. Um, or you know, you're not actually doing the work yourself and you're having everyone else pull up your slack. Right. Yeah. Which is another yeah. I've, I've seen that happen quite a bit. I, yeah, no, it's, I, I think another big one, I see this a lot in real estate agents, and we've, we've talked about this before on, on, on shows, talking about how, like, the, the stages of business. And you have, like, the early stage yeah. where it's like, hey, everybody just come on in, whatever. And a lot of times what I see happen is, um, especially in the early stages, people make big, big, big promises that they can't keep. Mm. So so they they go to somebody and they go man come on in and you're gonna be part of this and you're gonna be an owner whatever yeah, it's it is a huge and dream. then it's like two yeah. or three years down the road they realize that Joe doesn't have a place anymore or he's not whatever and, and here's where I yeah. think here's where I think the unethicalness comes in I think that we all make mistakes when we first start I think that that's it's, it's somewhat common you're not gonna yeah. know every mistake to avoid. What what's what's the problem becomes? Are you having real conversation? Once you know you need to make a change, or once you know something's not working, or once you know, hey, I kind of made that promise and I'm not gonna be able to fulfill it. Like once you know that, are you having that yeah. conversation, or are you letting things slide? You know what what do you need to kind of rep, uh, rep, repair, um, reclarify whatever? As the owner, you have you have permission to pivot. It's your right. responsibility to your goals, to the business, everything else. To hey, we realize this isn't working. We have to pivot. But I think your responsibility is to clarify that and, and, and sh- communicate that in the most effective way that you can as soon as you know that that needs to happen. Right. So, I, and I think that the last the way that we're really unethical is probably not having conversations that we need to have. So in other words, mm-hmm. right, you know Joe from whatever is not going to work out. Does Joe know that, right? Or, or you're pissed off, like not having conversations yeah. with the people in your world, having conversations about them that you're not having with them. Ooh. If, if that anyone open your face eventually, because and here's something that I, the, here's here's a here's a little test with that one that I always say, um, and I don't remember where I heard this, but I've 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 loved it ever since. Um, the example that I use is like, the statement is that never have a conversation with somebody else that you're that you should be having with with another person. Yeah. And the example that I use, which is it's interesting because people do this all the time, right? Um, you're in a restaurant, you're sitting down, and your food comes over to you, and your food is wrong, and you're sitting with a group of friends, and you taste the food, and you and you're like, yeah, that food's wrong. I, I hate that food. And everybody starts talking about the food, and the waiter comes over, and the waiter says, Hey, how is everything? And everyone goes, it's fine. It's great. It's great. Now, here's the thing. The waiter in this situation is the only person that has the power to change the circumstance that you're in. The interesting thing is, is that oftentimes we want to speak about the problem rather than solve the problem. So let's apply this to... Something that happens in, in the in the business. Something someone does yeah. something in the office, and you're like, you know what? This person did this. I can't believe they yeah. did this. Yeah. Can, you, can you believe they did this? I am really, you know, Wayne. I'm just really upset with this person. Right. I got, you know, yeah. Can you believe that? Now, have you actually? What if you didn't do that at all? What if you only spoke to the person that could solve the problem? But that would be so much less exciting. <laughs> But it would create a lot less friction. <laughs> and I know that's it's hard to do, but if you think about like all the times that you complain to your wife or you complain to your boss or you complain to your yeah. employee, well, that's not to your boss, but like you complain to, you know, uh, you know, an employee or a colleague or someone else and not to the one person that could actually com- contain, can, uh, you know, could actually fix the issue. How much less drama could you have in your life 
yeah. if you if you chose to do well, that. Well, that's an integrity and that, issue. And yeah. how many often times do we see not even ethics, just employees? Ethics issue. Right, it's an ethics, ethics, yeah, issue. ethics. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> ethics. Yeah, but but how often do we see that? Not even just with employee and employee. How often do we see that the boss is talking to another employee about this employee? Absolutely. All that that is a cancer for the entire business. Yep. Right. It's so so if it. the boss is talking to this employee about this employee, right? This employee goes, "Holy cow! What's the boss thinking about? Who's who's he talking to me about? Right? You, you I tell mm-hmm. you what, it is is like a cancer. It's the beginning of of, of seeing an organization organization um get rigid and then fall apart or just fall apart right yeah so uh i think this is not the golden rule is uh do what you would have others do unto you the platinum rule is do what others would have would want you to do to them right so i think this is about if, if, if you're talking shit about me i would love for you to come and talk to me about that right do unto others as you'd have them do yeah and um yeah level up yeah it matters so guys this isn't the end all be all of this conversation not even close I think people like spend years in like philosophy class like just trying to trying to do this. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, guys, let us know uh, what your, your thoughts are in the comments down below. Um, let us know what you think. Let us know uh, what what are what are things that where you have seen people act unethically inside your bu- inside a business, and what have you done about it? Yeah. Right. What are what are you doing as a business owner to hold yourself accountable to a really high standard? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, or do you, do you have other business owners that you're meeting with? Are you are you are you that vulnerable and honest? What do you guys think about like this whole thing of fake it or make it? Fake is it, or make it is it real? Should you do it, or does it send you down an ethical quandary slope all the way to the end of your demise? I don't know. I want to hear from. I, like, there's a lot of you out there. I want to hear. I want to hear. Um, um, so guys, uh, we really appreciate you watching. Um, guys, if you liked this episode, if you liked what we're doing, hit the like button, leave us a comment. Um, guys, you can uh, listen to us on, you know, uh, on iTunes and on pretty much any kind of podcast you can think on. Uh, leave us a message. You can actually leave us a voice message on on Anchor. Ooh. If you, yeah, you, so I don't know I if you all know this. Be the first. I so haven't got one of those yet. I, I, I haven't either. So, but if you want to like be a part of the next episode. Um, you can actually leave us a, 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 a like your thoughts and a voicemail, awesome. and I'll stick him at the, stick him at the end of the episode. Let us know if there's a topic you want us to dive into. If there's something mm-hmm. you're struggling with, a decision you're trying to make, uh, put that on there. Leave a voicemail. That'd be awesome. We'd love to dive into that. Yeah, and if you're in the Dallas area, um, you know, heck, I'm I'm, I'm, I'm going to extend this as a one-time only deal <laughs> for the people that have gotten to the end of this episode. If you're in the Dallas Fort Worth area, and you want to be part of the podcast. And you have a question you want Wayne and I to answer. We will do a special episode. We'll pick yes. the best question. Yes. We'll bring you in. Have you come in here, sit down, and we'll work through the, the whole question. We'll work we through might the whole even deal. Give him a t-shirt. Uh, yeah, you'll probably get some swag out of this. Yeah. At so. the end. <laughs> At the, <laughs> At the end. end. We'll, we'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. So, all right, guys. Until next time, be your own hero. Mm-hmm.